Today, we're taking a closer look at the Tactic 7 AMOLED, from initial setup to navigating the menus and several things in between. You'll notice a lot of similarities to the video we did a while back with the Epix Pro, but we also wanted to cover some tactical specific features that the Tactic 7 AMOLED brings to the table. While I'll be using the newest version from our Tactic 7 line, much of the information we're talking about will also pertain to the standard and solar versions as well. Let's get started. Depending on which device you purchase, you'll receive different things inside the box. With a Tactic 7 standard, your device comes with a black silicone strap. If you purchase the Pro, the Pro Ballistic, or the AMOLED, you're also going to receive the nylon ballistic strap as well as the black silicone band, the charging cable, and your documentation. Now let's move on with getting your watch set up. After you turn on the device by pressing and holding the top left button, you'll get to this uh, welcome screen. We're going to press the top right button to get into the language settings. Your Tactic 7 AMOLED has both our five button design and a touch screen. So you can choose to either scroll with the touch screen or with the up and down buttons on the left hand side. I'm going to select English. And I also want to choose pair it to my phone. From here, you're going to want to scan the QR code that pops up on this device screen. If you're brand new to Garmin, then you're going to be directed to the App Store, where you're going to want to download the Garmin Connect app and create an account. I'm already a user, so Connect automatically opens up for me, and it found the device right away. So I'm going to choose Connect it. And then it's asking if I want to uh, you know, connect to my Bluetooth with the six-digit pin. I'm just going to confirm that that number is uh, the same, and then select Pair. This is asking if I want my Tactic 7 to receive my uh, phone notifications, which I will allow. And then on the next screen, you're going to be asked if you, you want to make this your primary wearable. Your primary wearable is the main data source for your daily health metrics, such as steps, stress, and sleep. I'm currently using a different watch, so I'm going to select no. But if this is your main device, then you want to choose yes. This screen is asking um, if you're a current user, would you like to transfer your settings from your previous device over to your new device? And this is a new feature that is great for people that are upgrading from older devices so that um, you know all your settings can transfer over. For the purposes of this video, I want to use my default settings on the watch. Next, I'm being asked about my sleep schedule. As a current user, I'm set up from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and this is when the watch would be set to Do Not Disturb. If you're a new user, just go ahead and set up uh, your sleep schedule. And we're almost there. We're going to sync our device, and then you're all set. There are some tutorials at the end of the setup section that you can go through if you'd like. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to choose Skip. There's also uh, more options here where you can dig into uh, you know, how the watch will work with music, Garmin Pay, our new ECG app, as well as the AB Synapse app. Uh, but you, know, you can take a look at any of those, but I'm gonna choose not now. And then we're ready to go. Next, let's just quickly go over some button operation. As I mentioned before, our Tactic 7 is a part of our adventure lineup that includes um, an awesome five button design along with our touch screen. So let's go through what each button can do. The top left button is your power button, but it also works as your light button. If just by pressing it, you can turn your display on and off. Now, depending on which watch you have, that might act a little bit differently. This AMOLED display, it just will turn the display completely off. If you're on a standard uh, Tactic 7 or Pro version, it'll you know, adjust the backlight. This is also where you can access your flashlight by double tapping and turning on the flashlight. And we'll talk about the flashlight later. The middle button is your up button, but it also acts as your uh, menu button. Press and hold, and we'll get into your main menu. And from here, again, you can use your up and down buttons on the left side or use your touch screen. On the right side, this is where your back button is. Your back button, we can go back to the previous screen. And then in inside of activities, you can also use it to uh, press a lap or a transition depending on the activity. Your upper right button is your start stop button. And this is what you'll use to select items that are on your screen and then also get into your uh, GPS activities.
Let's take a look at what we call our control menu. The control menu can also be found on the top left button by pressing and holding. From here, you can use your up and down button to scroll through this wheel, or you can also use the touch screen to move around. One of the first things I want to show you is the flashlight feature. So as I mentioned, you can just double tap your top left button to access that quick light, but this is where you're going to get to the settings for it. So inside your control wheel, this is where you will find the settings options. You have one green light as well as four white options. The tip on this is that whatever setting you leave the flashlight on here is what will uh, make the flashlight work the next time when you use the double tap from the main screen. So let's go ahead and choose the green and then I'll show you from the main page. If you double tap, the green light now comes on. So again, to change that, press and hold the top button, get into your control wheel, find the flashlight, and then change the setting to what you choose. The control wheel also allows you um, to find lots of different settings and is also customizable. So once you're inside this menu, you can select any of these uh, um, features, or if you press and hold the middle button over here, it goes into the menu for your control wheel. So you can add controls, you can reorder them, or you can remove them. Let's reorder. Select which device you want to move around. We'll just use the brightness as an example. And here, as I spin the control wheel around, I can then choose where I want that brightness level to drop in. So I'll leave it right there. Next, let's talk about your glances. From here, you can use your up and down buttons to access those or use your touch screen. So again, you can uh, scroll through these and you can just look at them at this high level or you can choose something to dig into a little bit deeper. So this is my endurance score. Gives you a little bit of a tidbit on what that means. And then from here, you can kind of dig into the data a little bit deeper. Again, you can always use your uh, touch screen to go up and down or go back as well. Now, if you want to customize this, um, this list, you can uh, go all the way to the bottom and go to the edit section. And this is the list that has already been determined um, that is showing up on your watch. So you can click the right button to edit these and you can either click the right button again to uh, remove that from your list or you can uh, change the position of it by just moving that, uh, that widget up or down. And then you can also go to the bottom of this page and click add more where you could create a folder to add more glances inside of one folder or you can just pick individual glances to add to your list. So let's see um, what I might want to add here. Let's do the moon phases. So I'll add that to my list along with the uh, stress score. And then now when I go back, that's they're showing up on my favorites list there. And so then I can edit it or move it. So if I want to move that, I can just decide where I'd like that to sit inside my widgets. Next, let's get your activities set up. By pressing the top right button for your start stop, it'll show that we already have preloaded some favorites on here for you. Tactical, Jump Master, Track Me, Navigate, Project Your Waypoint, Reference Point, and Map along with applied ballistics are all listed as favorites at the top of your device. And then we also have additional uh, workouts, the fly, uh, app, run, bike, other common apps that are our most popular activities already loaded in your list. But if you'd like to edit these and change these to different activities, you do that by going down to add more. And from here you can find, uh, you know, inside these different folders, what you'd like to add. So let's go ahead and find, um, we want to do maybe a hunting activity. And then from here, it's going to show up on the list. And you can either, uh, you know, put it up here in your favorites if you'd like, or you can move it down into your regular, into your regular list and just drop it wherever it is it's important to you. If there's something on this list that just doesn't speak to you and you don't want it there, you can easily remove it by just scrolling to whatever activity it is that you aren't interested in, pressing and holding the middle button on the side, you can either um, reorder it if you wanted to, but we're going to remove this from the list. Let's customize one of these activities so that the data sets are exactly the way that you want them. 
So for the purpose of this video, let's choose running. Now when you get into the settings here, um, you can either do this directly on the device or we'll be able to do it from the phone as well. So I'm gonna press and hold the middle button, go into my run settings, then data screens. And then here, you're on the left-hand side, you can see that you have multiple data screens to choose from. So you scroll um, to whatever page it is that you would like to edit. And then you're gonna top, hit the top right button where the edit is, and you wanna change uh, the data fields. So this is uh, like a graphical feel. If you like that, you can, uh, you know, you can choose to do uh, different options here, but you can scroll down to uh, graphical, and there's uh, lots of different options uh, in that graphical setting, or you can just choose a standard, um, you can do a chart or just a standard field as well. You can really customize this however you'd like, and then you can also do this real time from your phone. You're gonna go into your phone and hit more, Garmin devices, find your device, go under current activity, data screens, and then this represents the same screens that we were looking at over here. So I'm gonna hit the top one. And now in real time, you can change the number of uh, screens that you'd like to change uh, switch this to. So you can go different layouts. And once you find a layout that you like, then you can edit the data screens down below. So we'll change this to maybe a heart rate field. And then the next one can be distance, timer is fine. Maybe we wanna switch that to elevation. Whatever it is that makes sense to you, you can customize all of your data pages so that you can see what you'd like during that individual activity. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite things about these watches, which are hotkeys. Hotkeys are completely customizable, but they do come with some default settings. So to get started, to look and see what's on here, you can press and hold the left bottom button, and that opens up your music providers. If you press and hold the bottom right button, this will go to your recent apps list. And my favorite is if you press the top right and the bottom left together, you can quickly turn your touch screen on or off, which is particularly useful in certain situations where you don't want that on, like the rain or any water situation or even the shower. In order to customize these, you're going to press and hold the middle button on the left-hand side, scroll down until you get to uh, system, and then scroll down to hotkeys. And this is gonna show you the list of what is set as the default. So we didn't go over, but you can hold the start button to do your dual grid. Um, we covered the hold the back, hold the down, the touch screen, uh, the start button and the up button do not currently have anything set there. So let's go ahead and get something added. And then you can scroll through the list and kind of choose what you might want. So let's do maybe a flight planning. And then uh, your back button and your light button together also activates your kill switch or set one for your back and your up button at the same time. Now it's time to talk about the features that you've probably been waiting for, the tactical specific items that are found only on our tactical watches. First, let's dive into the kill switch. If security becomes an issue, the kill switch immediately wipes the device of all user memory. Finding this setting, is in the control wheel. So if you press and hold the top button, you can scroll around until you get to the kill switch. And from here, it's actually just telling you a reminder of how to actually activate it so that if you've ever forgotten this, it's a way that you can go back and always get that um, information. So it's just reminding you that you need to use this as a hotkey, which is the top left and the bottom right buttons pressed together. You'll get a purposely designed sh uh, screen shake and then a 10 second countdown before it activates and actually wipes the device of all your secure data. 
You can press any key to cancel that before it actually happens. Next, let's talk about stealth mode. If you're living or operating in a secure location where you don't want your GPS position recorded, you can turn on stealth mode. While keeping the watch operational and showing your GPS information during your activity, stealth mode stops storing your GPS position and disables wireless connectivity and communication. So while you're using the activity, you can see your GPS information, but that actually won't be recorded to your final activity file. Next up is night vision goggle mode. The Tactic 7 AMOLED features an adaptive display that is both auto-sensing and user-customizable. Whether viewed under night observation devices or operating in the dark, night vision goggle mode allows you to further dim the display brightness to less than one nit and black out the display to remain undetectable. Unique to the AMOLED version, the entire watch will also change to this green shift mode. The heart rate sensor is turned off so there's no flashing lights on the back and your display timeout goes to four seconds by default, and the screen goes black unless you interact with it. The watch face will also change to a basic time or date function, only to reduce light that's being admitted. And if you get into your flashlight settings, the white flashlight has been disabled and you now have four levels of green. You can also change the night vision brightness setting in the control wheel. So when night vision goggle mode is enabled, you can find the display brightness and you can change that between three different levels. Doing all of this will help reduce the bloom so that you can use your Tactic 7 AMOLED under night vision goggle mode. All of our Tactic 7 watches also feature the Jumpmaster activity. And this feature works to calculate high altitude release points according to the military guidelines and helps to navigate you to your objective once you've jumped. You can find these options under your activity list by pressing the start and stop button. You can quickly see your dual position format at any time by pressing the default hotkey on the tactic seven of the start stop button on the top right side. After you've acquired your GPS, you'll be able to see your long lat plus your MGRS of your location and pressing the start button again allows you to save it. And this will allow you to later use this location as a waypoint for other navigation features. The Tactic 7 series also includes a few of the many aviation features found on our premium aviator smartwatches. We've included the fly activity profile. And inside this activity, you can find aviation navigation for direct to airports near me airports, or allows users to create a flight plan or follow a saved flight plan. You can also customize data screens or set up alerts and view the map or routing. Within the activity, at the top of the screens, you can edit these to show your nearest airport or you can go in and find your navigation features to also do flight planning with direct to airports and with a keyboard where you can type in the airport you're searching for. You can also look up your saved plans or any saved waypoints and locations you'd like to navigate to. Search for points of interest or just go back to start. The Tactic 7 series also includes important aviation weather information, including NEXRAD weather radar, METARs, and TAFs, which will require a phone connection. To add aviation weather, we're going to want to add that to our glances loop. By pressing the up button, that gets us to the bottom of our list quickly, and from there we can quickly select edit. We're going to go down to the bottom of our list here, click add and scroll down until we find aviation weather. Now that that's added to our list, we wanna move that up a little bit higher in our widget glance. There, we'll drop it there. Once you've added your aviation weather glance, you can customize it. By getting to this glance and pressing and holding the left middle button, you can get into your aviation weather options. Here you can choose your reporting station, um, the time display, or choose the level of which you want your weather to be downloaded. If we select into that, you can see your METAR. If you press the button, you can get into the TAF information. Next up on our Tactics 7, we want to talk about applied ballistics. 
To help me do this, I'm gonna have our in-house resident expert and um, product manager, Greg, come in to explain how you can use your Tactic 7 for applied ballistics solutions. When it comes to long range shooting, external ballistics is the study of how bullets move through the air. And today we're going to answer some common questions about the applied ballistic solver that you'll find in several of our tactical devices. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is unlock applied ballistics on your watch. If we run the applied ballistics app, you see that it's locked. So we run the AB Synapse Garmin app on the phone. It detects the watch and tells us we need to purchase a unlock. We hit purchase. It gives us the option to purchase the Applied Ballistics Unlock. We're going to go ahead and switch to my phone and watch that are already unlocked. Now that we're on my watch, let's dive into Applied Ballistics. So one of the first things is Quick Edit. If we go into Quick Edit, you can see the the field for range highlighted, and you can use the up and down buttons to set your range to whatever you want. When you hit start again, it moves to the next field, direction of fire. You can change that. Same with windage one and windage two, and the direction of the wind. You hit escape when you're done and it updates your solution right on that page. The next thing I want to show you is the range card. If you go to range card, you get a listing of ranges and then data fields. You can select which data field you get by pressing the start button and it will cycle through options for the third column. The first two columns stay the same. You can press pay, or down and go down in page at a time to get new farther values. As you can see, the range values here are a little extreme from an ELR session. So if we hold the start button down, we can change the fields like we showed moments ago. The range increment We'll leave that at 100 yard increments. And we can also set the base range. So instead of starting at 3,600 yards, we can start at a more reasonable value, like 20. Now when we do a page down, you see we start at the 20 yards and go out 100 yards at a time. So next let's look at the target card. The target card is very similar to the range card, except it uses your predefined targets that we'll get to later. So you have 10 predefined targets. It shows you the range, the target name, the range, the elevation, and your windage one and windage two values. You can page down an item at a time to work through those targets. So now let's talk about environment. The first option is auto update. If we turn auto update on, temperature and pressure are updated automatically every five minutes. If we leave it off, you have to do that manually. Use current position, we'll use your current latitude, which is used in Coriolis uh, calculations. Wind speed one is your initial wind value or the lower end. Wind speed two is the upper end of your wind bracket. Wind direction is the clock direction. So if the wind is coming directly from your right, it would be a three o'clock wind. So we'll set that to three o'clock. Latitude, you can either manually set or using use current location above, we'll set that automatically. Temperature is the current temperature. If you have a paired Tempe sensor, you can use that or set it manually. Station pressure, same thing. Use the sensor in the watch. And humidity, you manually set. 
So next, let's look at Target. While Target card that we looked at earlier is more of a read-only view of your predefined targets, Target is the way to actually define those targets. So you have a list of 10 targets. When you select one, you can change the target name, the range, the direction of fire, which is the direction you're facing toward the target, inclination, which would be the up or down angle to the target, the speed the target is moving, if it's a moving target, and the option to set as current. The set as current option is what determines which target is shown on the main page. So if we choose set as current, you'll see the block around T1, and if we exit back out to the main page, the elevation and windage and range and direction of fire and all those values are from T1. All right, let's look at profile now. If we choose profile from the menu, this is where you create a profile for each rifle. So in my case, I have several profiles created already, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. I'll leave the name as new one just so we can keep track of it. We choose bullet properties. You can enter manually the ballistic coefficient, drag curves and all these items. Uh, the easiest and best solution is just choose bullet database. Choose your caliber. In my case, I'm shooting a six millimeter. The bullet manufacturer. So we'll choose a burger. Long range hybrid target, 109 grain. Now you can select the drag curve. G1 is more of a older style uh, straight wall projectile. G7 is the modern hunting rifle projectiles. And custom is an actual measure drag curve instead of using a standard and a scaling factor. So we'll choose custom. We'll back out of bullet properties and go to gun properties. So my muzzle velocity, I know is 2875, which I got using our Zero C1 Pro. My zero range is 100 yards. Sight height is the, the height of the middle of your scope over the middle of the bore. So for my rifle, it's 2.1 inches. Zero height is an offset if you don't have a 100 yard zero. If you were a certain height over the aiming point when you're zeroed because you can't get any lower, that's what zero height is. Zero offset is the same thing but left and right instead of up and down. Sight scale factor elevation is if your scope does not track perfectly and you want to apply a factor to the, the adjustments on it so that say when you dial 30 mils on your scope you really have 29.8 you can do that with sight scale factor elevation and windage the twist rate on my rifle is 7.2 and that's all we need to set calibrate muzzle velocity Calibrate DSF, view DSF table, and muzzle velocity temp table are advanced topics that are beyond the scope of this video. So we select our output units. In my case, I want mills because that's what my scope is set up for. And we're done. So we now have a new one profile. It's now selected. So if I go back to target, edit our current target to be 300 yards.
go back to the main page and I can see that it's calling for 0.95 mils of elevation, which is about what I would expect from having used that rifle a lot. The other thing that we didn't talk about on the main page is if you press down, there are some user selectable data fields. In my case, I've chosen time of flight, the amount of the windage solution that is due to spin drift, max ord and max ord range. So max ord is the height above the bore at the maximum for a given shot and max ord range is at what range from the shooter that will reach that that height. It also shows the target name and the profile name. So from that second page if you hit start you can go down to the bottom of the menu and say change fields and you can select which field you want to change and get a list of all the options to choose from. Now we're going to move over to the phone and show you an easier way to set profiles. While you can do everything on the watch without the use of the phone, it's just easier to use the phone. So let's create that same profile on the phone. We'll choose to create a new profile. You see new profile there. We'll change the name. To be new to. Open the bullet database. Choose the same bullet we did before on the watch. Then we go down to gun properties. Set our muzzle velocity. Our zero range. and our sight height. Our twist rate is 7.2 again. And that's all we need to set. Now we can select that new two profile Say send to Garmin device. It was successful. You come back to the watch, go down to profile, and we can see that the new profile we just created on the phone is currently selected. I hope we've helped you gain a better understanding of applied ballistics and how it can help you with your long range shooting. Stay tuned to our channel for another applied ballistics video coming soon. And as always, for more information, head on over to Garmin.com.